Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's great to have you here on this wellness and weight loss edition of the show. We are about to get into the seven signs and symptoms for those suffering from electrolyte-based deficiency. Now, why I believe that today's topic is important is because most people When they run their blood work, they're not going to see their main electrolytes, and I'll share with you what those are, too low or too high. And in today's case, we're going to look at too low. Most of the time, that will never happen. But the problem is, if we go by our blood work alone, we believe that we're totally happy and healthy human beings. The problem is that for most of us, we know that when we go to our PCP or we go to our general practitioner, whatever you want to call the main doctor that you go to, What you're really looking for are symptoms of disease, or what you're looking for is blood tests that reveal some type of disease-based process. But from a functional medicine perspective, we don't want just the absence of disease to say that you're healthy. We want you to be optimal. We want you to have the vibrancy, the energy, the life in your body to want to pursue life, to want to do more. And electrolytes are a huge part of that. They honestly are. A lot of people talk about energy and they talk about B vitamins and I get it and I use B vitamins all the time in my practice, every single day. There's no doubt about it. And I believe in them. And it was one of the things that certainly helped me. I was literally deficient in B vitamins. You could run my labs and you could see how deficient I was in some of those main B vitamins. B6 being one of those that I later ran and found out how important it was, especially when my mentor introduced me to what's called paradoxal 5-phosphate, which is P5P, and that's vitamin B6, the functional medicine form of it, the orthomolecular form of it. But beyond B vitamins, beyond coenzyme Q10, beyond PQQ, beyond nicotinamide riboside, beyond all of those things, there's what happens at an even deeper foundational base level. And I would say even deeper than your vitamins are your electrolytes. I honestly believe, and I was introduced to this many years ago, I'm very thankful for that, is minerals. And electrolytes are some of those minerals. Now, minerals are what literally provide the foundation of our electricity in our body. When you think of electrolytes, I want you to think about electricity. So as I'm going through the signs and symptoms today, I think it's going to become very clear that there's a huge correlation between the levels of electrolytes in your body, the fine balance, the dance in your system, and you having the energy and life and vitality that you want and that you need. And this goes for every compartment of the body. It goes on at a cellular level. Just for an example, learned about this when I was studying bioregulatory medicine many years ago in the US at a great institute in Chicago, and then another one over that I studied at and I interned over in the Netherlands and also many certifications, one of those being out of Germany. And when I was studying bioregulatory medicine and we looked at actual cells and we looked at cells under a microscope, which I still have in my practice today, and I realized that we basically can take care of all of our human needs and our cells can continue to function at a very high level throughout our entire life if they're given the raw material they need. But the cells and the cell receptors have to be open to taking in those nutrients. So, for example, you can give yourself enough glucose to make your cells and your mitochondria have plenty of energy. But the problem is, we see this more and more in the world, that those cell membranes are not allowing for the glucose into the cell. So we end up with what? Higher levels of blood sugar. We end up with higher levels of body fat. So I think it's, it's kind of funny when I hear people say, I want to become more fat adapted. And I tell people all the time, sure, you want to become more fat adapted, but really what you want to become is more glucose adapted. Because we know that a certain segment of the population, they can eat as many carbs as they want and they don't gain fat, right? They don't gain weight. 
They're eating the same carbs as you, but they don't gain weight. Well, what are they? Well, they're better glucose adapted. Their body's running better on glucose. So we could say to you, you want to become more fat adapted. Well, really what you're saying is, I'm just going to stop eating carbs. You're not becoming more fat adapted. What you're doing is you're depriving your body of glucose because glucose doesn't function with your cells and body right now. But wouldn't it be better to say, how do I make my body more glucose adapted? And I'll be teaching more of that in the future as well. I teach that inside of the Integrative Health Practitioner course. And it is a little bit more in depth, but nothing that everyone on a daily basis can't begin to implement in their own life. And I have, I've gone through this before, just on a specific podcast, meaning that we do start people on our 21-day detox. We do lower those blood sugar levels initially, level out inflammation, level out hormones, and then we slowly begin to reintroduce carbohydrates at a lower glycemic index and load for a meal that they would be able to tolerate. And it's step by step by step. And anyone can do this. And this is just for the cells themselves. So what am I saying? Well, the cells over time can either become blocked from too many, not necessarily sugars. It's not necessarily sugar. It can be. But a lot of it is hydrogenated fats, oxidized fats, too many omega-6s. And they actually weaken the cell membrane. Okay, They can also clog the cell membrane. And that's because your cell membrane is a bilipid membrane. It contains two layers, harder fats, more solid fats, and softer fats. We call, well, I won't get too deep in the, the biochemistry right now, but Basically, we have some cells that won't allow for as much nutrients in or as much waste out. And what that allows is for more anaerobic environment. There are many people who believe that leads to more cancer. Because what's happening inside the cell is it's running on more of a lactic acid-based fuel source, which is not good. Muscles burn up faster that way, right? There's more fatigue, a lot more carbon. So, and again, I'll talk more about that in the future as well on, on different types of natural uh, cancer-based support. So what I would like to do today, though, is share with you how sometimes those cell membranes get blocked. And that one first example is this. Inside the cell, we know intracellularly, there's more potassium than there is sodium. And extracellularly, there's more sodium than there is potassium. But when someone is losing too much muscle or fasting for too long for their body type, they can actually begin to break down cells faster. We call that more of a catabolic-based state. Now, who's more prone to that? Well, people more prone to that would be more of an ectomorphic body type, more of the vata-based body type. And the endomorph would actually be on the other side of the spectrum. They do better with a little bit longer fasting, 12 hours, 14 hours, right? So they can do a little bit better there as long as, as I spoke about on yesterday's show, stress levels are lower. And so I do invite you to tune into yesterday's show. Yesterday was episode 1194. So just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 1194 for yesterday's show. And today's show is episode 1195. So two of those electrolytes that I just named are sodium and potassium. Well, if they're not functioning properly, we lose what's called that cellular osmotic pump. And that allows for all the good stuff to come in all the nutrients that those cells need to produce energy. And with 40 trillion cells, give or take, you need a lot of energy, right? You need a lot of energy being produced. And when you're producing that energy, you know it. You feel it. Your brain is clear. Your body's vibrant. You feel light. You feel ready to go. And when they're not producing the energy you feel, well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go through those signs and symptoms right now of electrolyte-based deficiency. And I will start with sodium. I'm going to go through sodium potassium right now. Now, they're all very similar. That's why I gave you seven signs and symptoms. And you know what? To make it a little bit easier, I'm going to go through all of them together because it really is easier to do it this way. And you need all of them. So that's why I'm saying to people, you can't just, I'm going to use a little bit more sodium. I'm going to use a little bit more potassium. I'll go through some finer details at the end, but you need all of these electrolytes. Now, There are four main electrolytes. Those are calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. There are certain second layers to this. We can look at phosphorus. We we can look at chloride, which is typically brought in as sodium chloride. 
and we can look at bicarbonates, right? So we can look at other mechanisms in the body. We're not going to focus on those today. We're going to focus on the four main electrolytes that are going to make our body functionally, function optimally, and that includes our heart. A lot of people, why don't we go through this one first? Arrhythmias, an imbalance in the beating of the heart. This can have to do with chloride. But most often in our practice, from a real-world perspective, we see it happen with magnesium all the time, literally all the time. And that's because people become depleted of magnesium very quickly. One of the main reasons is that you have to get it on a daily basis through your food. And a lot of higher magnesium foods, and I'll give you some of those right now, such as artichokes and spinach and fish and avocados, people aren't eating as much as they should. And also, eating a lot of processed food will deplete you of magnesium. But the main thing that depletes you of magnesium is stress. So think about it. Do you know anyone who's not stressed, right? And if you do, well, great. Then they probably have plenty of stores of magnesium. But our, in our practice, we work with a lot of people that are stressed. We run a hair tissue mineral analysis to look at those magnesium levels. And eight times out of 10, we will see that there's an imbalance between calcium and magnesium. One of the most important mineral balances in the world is calcium to magnesium. And calcium can be brought into the bloodstream and is far more plentiful in the body, even if you're not taking in. Now, you should be taking in calcium on a, on a daily basis. And you should actually be taking in more calcium than magnesium. But calcium, we have an enormous storehouse of, and that would be our bones. Muscle tissue, we have some calcium, but think about the bones. The bones have an abundance of calcium. And if your body needs calcium, it just breaks down a little bit of bone. Well, over time, that could create osteoporosis. And we never think about that. We never think about how stress, electrolyte imbalance, um, mega doses that some people give of like 50,000 IUs of vitamin D or 100,000 IUs you know, once a week instead of just doing a m normal smaller dosage or any number of things can create a massive discrepancy in calcium magnesium. Another big thing, think about how many people right now are on an acid blocker, whether it be over-the-counter or prescription. Acid blockers will block your absorption and your utilization of magnesium. So if you're taking it as a food, it's harder to break down. You need that stomach acid. That stomach acid helps to unlock the calcium, magnesium, zinc, a lot of the B vitamins, B12. So if you're on an acid blocker, you're very likely to be deficient in those, unfortunately. Very, very important to look at that. So we use, again, we use a hair tissue mineral analysis and we look at that calcium magnesium ratio. Most people need what we call full spectrum magnesium. It's three different forms of magnesium. So whatever your body uniquely absorbs well for magnesium, it will get it when you give it a tri-base form of that. So it will, it will get it in its own way and not at mega dosages. We typically will use somewhere between 110 to 120 per capsule in terms of milligrams. And we'll do one or two capsules once or twice a day. And that allows for the nervous system to relax. It allows for the mind and body to relax. And it used to also be in prescription form. I know for sure back in the 70s, I believe, 60s and 70s, that MDs would even give concentrated dosage of magnesium as a natural sedative for people under stress. We've just gotten away from that, right? We've gotten away from it, which is too bad. Another sign and symptom is dizziness. So dizziness can be a sure sign of an electrolyte-based deficiency. Now, a lot of people go right to sodium, and that's true. A lot of times, dizziness could be from a depletion of sodium. And a depletion of sodium, it's really straightforward how it happens. Your body gets stressed. It raises a hormone, not just cortisol, but it raises something else called aldosterone. And when aldosterone is elevated, it typically is telling the body to hold on to sodium. It's doing that for multiple reasons. One of them is that it increases blood pressure. Now, people say, well, you're supposed to stay away from salt with blood pressure. Well, that's really surface level. That's really looking at it as surface level. And that's because potassium becomes depleted. So yes, you shouldn't take in extra sodium if your potassium levels are depleted. Same with magnesium. Because you have something that's basically more of a vasoconstrictor with sodium, and the vasodilators and the relaxers of magnesium and potassium aren't there. So salt is really not the enemy. 
I mean, of course, you should not be using table salt, like bleached table salt at a restaurant, but some sea salt, rock salt, Celtic salt, real salt, all of those are fine. The problem is, it's only fine if it's in balance. It's always about balance. It's about achieving equilibrium. So if you haven't balanced your potassium and your magnesium to your sodium, of course, that will elevate blood pressure. But salt will not elevate a healthy person's blood pressure because it will be imbalanced with the other electrolytes and they'll be getting enough fluid. A lot of people have high blood pressure simply because they don't drink any water. They simply don't drink enough water. So if you have high blood pressure, elevate your water intake. You just you need to elevate that water intake. For most people, you need to elevate your magnesium. And your potassium, we don't use through supplementation. All of these are, of course, whole food first. But you need, I mean, a lot of people need supplementation for sure. They're simply not getting it through their food or digestion is too weak. The intestinal villi are too blunted. They're too inflamed to be absorbing a lot of these nutrients properly. So fix the gut and then wean off your supplements. That will be fine. So potassium, potassium is an easier one. You're going to get those through your dark leafy greens. But think about it. We have so many people not eating their vegetables because they were told carbs are bad. So they're not doing things like, uh, they're eating avocado probably, but they're not eating their greens. And that's going to that's gonna deprive them of a lot of the potassium that they need. Super, super simple to get that. All right, what's the next one that I want to give you? Gave you the dizziness, fatigue. Fatigue's a big one. I mentioned that a little bit. I mentioned the beginning. B vitamins, absolutely phenomenal. We need those. But you might not think about it, but you actually need all of your electrolytes, especially, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a limb here, especially... Your magnesium and your calcium, which I believe people are short on, again, not at a disease-based level, hyper or hypocalcemia, but really from a functional level because muscles contract using magnesium and calcium as well. It's part of the electrical impulse that the actin and myosin and the different nerves that innervate the cell use. This is extremely important. If you're getting not only fatigue, but I'm going to add my next one, which is muscle cramping or, you know, leg cramps that we get a lot oftentimes. This goes back to a low number of electrolytes. If your children are low, they're getting cramping, all those things. If you're low, if you've been sweating a lot, sure, add sodium. I'm going to give you my, my simple Gatorade mixture, which I've given before at the end. But you want to add back all your electrolytes, not just salt. It's not the only electrolyte. You need the others as well. Next one is this. Irritability and low mood. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If your body is feeling fatigued, your mind and emotions will feel fatigued as well. And when they're low, you're going to have low mood. You will have irritability. You will feel anxious and you will feel overwhelmed. It's one of the hallmarks I ask people in our practice, they fill out on the intake, whether they run in a lab at Equilibrium Nutrition or any other places. I just ask them like, what's your energy like? What's your mood like? And you'll see it correlate on a thyroid adrenal hormone or adrenal hormone test, or even a hair tissue mineral analysis. You will see if someone's low in their electrolytes, they're going to be lower mood. They're going to be apathetic. If someone's high on CalMag, but low on sodium potassium on a hair tissue mineral analysis, they're going to be more stressed. They're going to be more anxious you can see them correlate really nicely. And again, it's not magic. We ask people to fill out the intake before we even see their labs. This is not magic. I didn't make it up. These labs are tried and true. They've been around for many, many decades and been used for many, many years. So extremely important to look at that how the body goes, the mind and emotions go as well. Another one is headaches. I work with so many people with migraines, tension headaches, cluster headaches, headaches behind the eyes, etc. If you have not explored lower levels of magnesium, you have to do that first. The number one thing, weight on sodium, weight on potassium, weight on calcium. If you have not explored that you may have functionally low levels of magnesium, you have to do that first. It is sometimes such a simple fix and people feel better within weeks, not months, not years, but weeks. Simply adding one capsule full spectrum magnesium at lunch, two at dinner, and then doing the daily nutritional support shake in the morning. Just that alone is enough to alleviate some people's fatigue, many people's headaches and migraines. It's only one thing. Now there's about 
a half a dozen reasons why people may have headaches and migraines. And I've, I've talked about that quite a bit on the podcast. So you can always search these topics. You can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and type in migraine or type in headache. And you'll see the different house calls I've talked about it on. But that's one of the main reasons. That's a big one. And that's an easy one to fix. Now, of course, you'll, you'll want to work on bringing these up through whole food, but why not get the relief right away? That's how I look at it. One more I want to give you today is the last one, which is going to be turning the mind and body off at night for bed. So sometimes we suffer from being tired during the day and not being then able to sleep at night. It's the worst thing. I went through that probably for close to a decade. It was brutal. From my late teenage years through my mid-20s, I was tired all day and then I couldn't fall asleep at night. It was like almost like a curse. Like I was, I was cursed. You know, when I look at it, I'm like, who, who did this to me? How is this possible? I could sleep all day long. If my head hit the couch pillow, I would pass out. But if you asked me to try to go to bed at 10 o'clock that night, no way I could fall asleep. And a lot of it has to do with, again, balancing the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. But much of this has to do with electrolyte balance. Potassium and magnesium allow for greater parasympathetic. Sodium and calcium allow for greater sympathetic nervous system. We need both. But oftentimes, because of stress and the stress process of producing fight or flight hormones called norepinephrine and epinephrine and cortisol and aldosterone, we begin to deplete a lot of those parasympathetic nervous system minerals. Now we deplete all of our minerals, right? We deplete them all. Eventually, if you've been stressed long enough, chronic stress will deplete you of sodium. I had that. I had what's called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, along with Addison's disease. That is the worst of all worlds. One, you can't produce cortisol. You can't produce energy. And two, when you stand up or you go to exert yourself in any way, you feel like you're going to pass out. That's POTS. You have flu-like symptoms. Your joints hurt. And that is a depletion of your electrolytes. Modern medicine doesn't like to look at it that way, although they're starting to. They start to give medications to make you hold on to more sodium. Well, that's, again, a surface-level way of looking at it. Why not look at what depleted them in the first place and then replete them, put them back in your body, and then keep them there, right? Work on the entire, what I call, de-stress protocol. The diet, the exercise, the stress reduction, the toxin removal, the rest, the emotional balance, the supplements, and the success mindset. All of that that I wrote about in The Rain Barrel Effect will help people come back to life. It doesn't always happen overnight, but it does happen, and it's absolutely worth it. So hopefully today's podcast has been helpful. A few of the things that we use in our practice, of course, is always whole food first. We get an array of brightly colored fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. We add our protein in, whether it be paleo-based or be vegan-based, whatever the person prefers. We don't have to choose necessarily. And then we add in our good healthy fats as well. So we're adding healthy fats, mainly olive oil and avocado, the monounsaturated fats. And for those people that need it, especially the extra energy, we add in starches, root vegetables. We can add in some uh, gluten-free grains. Again, it depends on the person, depends on their digestion. It depends on their immune-based reactivity. And then on top of that, I always recommend using the daily nutritional support shake in the morning. It's an all-in-one that contains electrolytes, that it contains all of the cofactors as well that you make with the whole food, with the smoothie. It's an add-on to a smoothie. And then we use the daily fruit and vegetable blend. And the daily fruit and vegetable blend is actually 22 whole foods, their vegetables, their fruit, and their superfoods that have been ground down, or should say juiced, dehydrated. And there's no real sugar in it. And it allows you to get all of those nutrients in there. So you're getting the best of all worlds. So you're getting the best of functional medicine mixed with the best of whole food. That's what we recommend. On top of that, for most people, not everyone, but most people, if they've not run a hair tissue mineral analysis, eight out of 10 people, and found out their exact numbers, well, they would take a full spectrum magnesium. One at lunch, two at dinner. If you started to become very tired, lethargic, lightheaded, et cetera, with taking the full spectrum magnesium, well, that means you would most likely need the calcium to balance that, the CalMag. Now, it's about two out of 10 people. Eight out of 10, the magnesium. But what if you do feel even more lethargic? Well, one is you probably doing more of a repair-based process. But number two is you'd want, at least for now, to use the CalMag Complete. Same way, zero at, well, none at breakfast, you're getting that in your shake. One at lunch, two at dinner. 
This is just a basic way to get started with calcium magnesium. Easy, straightforward. Okay. Sodium potassium, super simple. I wake up every morning. I mix in my daily fruit and vegetable blend. I put in a pinch of sea salt. People always ask how much to taste. If you don't taste that sea salt, add a little bit more. That's what your body needs. You taste the sea salt, do a little bit less. And then squeeze in a lime or a lemon, whatever you prefer. That's your potassium. Your sea salt is your sodium. Your lime or lemon is your potassium. That is what I call natural-based Gatorade right there. Easy, easy, simple, simple. And you can just drink that upon waking. Eight ounces, 12 ounces of water. Mix that up, drink it down. And you're now giving yourself a natural Gatorade to start the day. You could even consume that at any time during the day. That would be totally fine. Just stir it with a spoon. Get that sea salt and so in the uh, lime to mix right in there. In Ayurveda, they always did lime. And that will enable you to get more of those electrolytes. Very simple. Then, of course, focus on your whole foods. Get in an array of colors, blues, greens, oranges, yellows, all the different colors of the rainbow with your fruit and vegetables every day. If you eat a nice whole food diet and you get seven to nine servings of low glycemic fruit and veggies every single day, you'll be doing yourself a world of good. Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. We will link up everything today at stephencabral.com forward slash 1195. So if you're looking for any of those links, whether it be what we do, which is our daily nutritional support, daily fruit vegetable blend, whether it be for full spectrum magnesium, CalMag Complete, anything, you can head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1195. Hopefully today's show was helpful. As always, if it was, please do feel free to pass this along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.